Welcome, everyone. I am Eugenia Becker, Birders Night Committee Chairperson, and I want to welcome you to our March 2021 Birders Night Zoom presentation. In fact, the original presentation was Tuesday, March 9th, but due to technical problems, that did not record. We are thus doing a special presentation, which is being recorded on Wednesday, March 24th, 2021. It will be av available on the Salem Audubon YouTube channel. Today, in addition to myself, Tim Johnson and Kathy Patterson from the Birders Night Committee will be participating. Our speaker today is Cynthia Donald. During her busy professional life, Cynthia raised three kids and had several business partnerships. The final one is a partner in a civil engineering, land planning and land survey company. Cynthia is a relatively recent transplant to Oregon from Arizona. She settled in quickly to Oregon, becoming in short order a board member of the Salem Audubon Society Board and of the Friends of the Willamette Valley National Refuge Complex Board, as well as chairperson of the Salem Audubon Field Trip Committee. But in spite of considerable time devoted to serving the community, Cynthia's overwhelming passion is exploring our planet. She has lived in six different states and one foreign country and became seduced by and seriously interested in birds in late 2001. She managed to retire early in 2007 to focus on these pursuits. One of the places which most fascinated Cynthia is Madagascar, an island so isolated from the African continent near which it lies and populated with such unique bird and animal families that it is sometimes called the eighth continent. During November 2011, Cynthia was fortunate to travel on a field guides trip to Madagascar. And we are fortunate today to be able to fly there on our coattails. Take us away, Cynthia. All right, gladly. Give me just one moment. Hello, everyone. This, um, uh oh, wrong button. This uh, slideshow is automatically um, forwarding itself. And so from time to time, I will pause. I just want to briefly touch on a few things about Madagascar before we get into it. The first thing is that um, it's an island. It's about 250 miles off the coast of Africa. And um, it has been isolated for a very, very, very long time. It was initially part of the uh, giant um, I, or the giant continent of Gondwana. And when that broke apart, Madagascar, which was attached to the Indian plate, uh, drifted away or was pulled away from the continent of Africa. And it has uh, continued to evolve an amazing um, fauna and flora um, during that time. Its population is a little less than 28 million people. And um, let's go take a look at some of it. If you're interested, this is an absolutely amazing book. I recommend it highly, The Eighth Continent. So it's a living laboratory and like any other place on earth. It's about the size of Texas which is interesting because even though we think that's a big uh, state, it's really not very big. And it's been isolated from all other land masses for more than 160 million years. 
which makes most of its plant and animal species unique. And it is thought of as a mini continent by a number of uh, biologists. Has a very, very high level of endemism. And it's one of the top four or five uh, threatened biodiversity places on the planet. There are five endemic avian families, over 635 endemic reptile species, and uh, five endemic plant families. This is their flag. And I'm going to pause it right here again because I want to talk a little bit about um, Madagascar. Here's the island itself. Um, you can see here's Africa right over here. This is Mozambique. And this map shows the routes we took. The red were routes where we drove down there, a little bit down here from in the south, up here in the northwest. And this was actually a boat trip from uh, Maroon Sept down to the Maswal Peninsula. The dash lines represent uh, flights, plane flights. Even though it's not that large of a country, um, getting around is um, is a bit of a can be a bit of a challenge, as you will see from some of the roads. And now we're going to go into some of the. I'm going to pause again for just a moment. Um, there is a central mountain range or a massif that occurs that runs from north to south right along the central part of the island. And what this does is it effectively changes the climate. On the east coast, you have rainforest. You have high altitude rainforest, mid altitude rainforest, and lowland rainforest all along the east side. And on the west side, you have the thorn scrub. You have, again, you have, uh, you have, do have a bit of evergreen woodland in here, but mostly this whole part of the country is a uh, different uh, lowland, very dry, either deciduous or thorn scrub forest. And now we'll have some shots of different portions of the uh, different uh, forests. This is a lowland rainforest on the northeast portion of the country in the Maswal Peninsula. You can see it's very lush, it gets a lot of rain. This is another shot. This happens to be a rice paddy uh, in a village that's up in that part of the country. And here we are in mid-altitude rainforest. And another one, this is Ranamafana. This is around uh, just south of the central part on the east, um, east side. And this is a rice paddy that was actually uh, developed inside that national park. Now we're over on the west side. This is the dry deciduous forest. Another shot of it. And now you're down into the very southern um, thorn scrub, the very arid part. And another shot of that. that. Actually, I was living in Arizona when I traveled here and this reminded me of home. <laughs> Here's one of the trails we were on in that um, thorn scrub. And this is another portion down in a park called Tuliar. And depending on, here we are up in the Massif, in the central high um, plateau in the mountain area. And you can also see it's very dry up there. And I should point out, we were there in November, which is part of the wet season. This is the Delta, and you can see all this red stuff. Well, that is erosion. Here's an aerial shot of erosion that's coming down into the Delta from uh, the higher land areas. Erosion is a, one of the very big problems that Madagascar has, mainly due to deforestation. This hill was uh, part of, um, of a forest at one point. And here's what happens. You get all this red um, soil that washes down. 
This is the capital city, M. Tananarivo, also called Tana. And this is one of the lovely old cities, uh, Ambosit, up in the highlands. Fort Dauphin is off on the southern coast. And uh, you will see when we get into some of the signs that uh, they're in French because Madagascar was uh, colonized by the French and was um, ruled by them for many years. Although their primary language is uh, Malagasy, but they also speak French and some English. These are some different villages shots. This one is up in the Massif. You can see the different type of construction that they use there. This is another village. And another village. You can see uh, remaining uh, forest in the background. Uh, people there live, they're mostly uh, agrarian and they live a subsistence lifestyle. These are some shots of street scenes of people getting up in the morning, shopkeepers getting their wares out, kids going to school, people going to either shop or to their places of, uh, of work. This guy is hauling stuff. Another shot of uh, the busy mornings. You can see the sign here in French. Here's some markets. You can find anything you want uh, in the market and they're all open air markets. There's food, quite a lot of food. The vendors come in every day from um, the agricultural areas and set up their wares. And this is not laundry. This is, um, these are clothing. This is clothing for sale, just displayed on this fence. Here we have the meat market. And this is a shop that is selling mostly uh, grains and potatoes. And here we have eggs right here. And this was uh, quite a well-stocked store with all kinds of fresh vegetables. These are some different modes of transportation getting around in the country. And you never see a vehicle that is not overloaded like this. This is how most people travel. Again, they're agrarian and they, don't, they do not live in the cities. And the cattle that you see are primarily zebu. That is one of their main exports. There's some more shots, one vehicle coming toward us and another vehicle that's going away, both very heavily loaded. This is uh, what I was mentioning earlier about some of the roads being a challenge. Um, this is a main highway and that's the back of that bus. You have people hanging off and just clamoring any place there's an inch of room, they're on it. And here we have um, a truck that's on what looks like a um, sort of a wheelbarrow thing. And here, look at the dog. He's in the smart place in the shade. As you might expect in an agrarian place, um, there's a lot of cattle. These are all zebu. This is traffic. We actually passed this truck and I was astonished because as you can tell, it's pretty much a blind curve. And we did stop and help these guys get things sorted. There was a flat tire. There's some more traffic, the cattle again with the carts. And we have a tuk-tuk off on the left, that blue thing and rickshaws and a guy changing a tire. I love how some things are translated into English. I think that actually is not what that means to say. So here's some shots in this next series of everyday life. If you live near or on the coast, you are a fisherman. Here we have people with dugouts.
And you can see some of the um, influences from Arabia and from the Indonesian areas with that, that boat. There were three different groups of people that came and settled Madagascar. The first ones were from Indonesia and the islands. These ladies are planting rice. The second group that came um, were from Africa. And the third group that came down uh, were Arabs. These ladies are washing their vegetables. Now this uh, is a, a shot of one of the main rivers there and people are doing all kinds of things in this river. And here's a close up. We have a guy washing a bike. We have people taking a bath. We have other people doing laundry and we have uh, cattle drinking. This is actually our laundry uh, that was done and laid out to dry and we zip past and one of the guys said, Oh, there's my shirt. So anyway, this fish was amazing, that little young guy carrying it. This is a shot of how they make uh, concrete there. They haul in the raw materials, dump it, and then mix it by hand. And here's some chickens in a village. And the ever-present Muscovy ducks, I was like, those are Muscovy ducks and we're in Madagascar and they are certainly not native there. Here's some shots of schools. Um, education is compulsory uh, for the first six grades anyway. And then they have high schools and they have three uh, universities in the country. This is a shot in a very poor community. This is a high school. And here's this lovely group of kids that we encountered uh, in one of our national parks, one of their national parks. And that's how kids get to school. They don't have moms taking them, they walk. And the people are just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So those of you who cook, these are cloves. This is one of the things they export. They will grow them, they dry them, and they either are dried and sold whole or they are uh, powdered. And that's what a clove looks like. If you've never seen one before, it was dried. Sisal is the plant that looks like an agave in the background. That's one of their products. They're one of their exports and zebu. Um, and out of sisal, they make raffia, and out of raffia, they will weave and make animals and other things. One of the reasons that deforestation is so prevalent is because people make charcoal so they can cook. And they will burn uh, the forest, and they make charcoal in these pits. Uh, once they have taken the forest down, um, they replant with eucalyptus, which is a very fast-growing non-native. These are some of the charcoal things. They also produce bricks. Uh, they will make form bricks out of the mud and then they build these um, structures, fill them with wood, light them. And when they have burned and then finished cooling, they have bricks with which to construct their homes. Memorials, death is a more important thing to the Malagasy than, than living. And the family will spend years uh, saving money in order to build these memorials to a dead ancestor. This is another uh, type of memorial that was built in another part of the country. And on the left is a cell phone tower. Um, I thought it was great. And I'm on the right with our uh, primary guide. And here we have elephant bird. Everybody's heard about that. On the right, you have elephant bird, ostrich, egg, and chicken egg. Now I'm going to pause for just a second again. We're going to go through a series of um, animals that we encountered. If you see a photo of it, um, I may have taken it, one of my friends may have taken it, or I may have gotten it um, in, um, you know, on the public domain. If there is an asterisk by the name of the bird or any animal, because um, it's more than just birds. It means it's endemic. 
So here's the little grebe, also known as gabchick. The Madagascar grebe, which is an endemic. This is a juvenile red-tailed tropic bird, which I think is way lovelier than the adult. The next shot is um, of the adult in flight. The reed cormorant, if you see the picture on the left, he's got that lovely mottled back, really a pretty bird. African darter, we would call that an anhinga. Madagascar pond heron, just because it has the name Madagascar in it doesn't mean that it's an endemic, because these guys are also found in the Comoros. Squaco heron. Striated heron, their answer to our green heron. Very, very similar. The black heron, they have a lot of herons in Madagascar. the dimorphic egret, because it comes in two colors. Purple heron, very similar to our great blue. The gray heron. And their giant that is an endemic, the humblos heron. It is a big, big bird. Hammer cup. And their crested ibis, also an endemic. This guy's been probing in the mud, as you can see from his bill. And the sacred ibis, Madagascar sacred ibis, not an endemic. Greater flamingos. And Bernese teal up in the upper left, which is endemic, and the red-billed teal, which is not. Mellor's duck, which is an endemic, and by any other name would be a mallard. White-faced whistling duck. Knob-billed duck, what a bizarre, but really, really pretty duck. But boy, is that a weird looking knob on his bill. Madagascar fish eagle, an endemic. Uh, it's a hyliatus, so it is related to the African fish eagle and our bald eagle. Hence, goshawk, an endemic. The Madagascar harrier hawk. This was one of my favorite birds. It is a lovely thing, it is endemic. The next shot is of one in flight, and you can just see this gorgeous, gorgeous bird. Madagascar buzzard, this is uh, a beauty -o. And Madagascar harrier. Black kite. This is one of my favorite shots of black kite because they come in different colors. And uh, even though it's black, it's not that color. The banded kestrel, this guy is munching on a hissing cockroach. And Francis the Sparrowhawk. And then the Madagascar kestrel, which is really a pretty little thing, but not an endemic. Sooty falcon, their answer to the uh, peregrine. Really a pretty little dark bird. There's Madagascar partridge. And the helmeted guinea fowl. Gorgeous feathers, a really goofy looking head. There's their wood rail, that is an endemic.
And now we are into the first of the endemic families, the mesites. This is the brown mesite, the subdesert mesite, and the white breasted mesite. These guys were a pair and they never stopped calling. They ran on one side of the trail, across the trail, and then on the other one and never stopped once. Here's the button quail, also an endemic. White-throated rail. The Madagascar uh, jacana, which is really a beautiful, beautiful jacana. And the Pratt and Cole. Black wing stilt, really, really a widespread uh, bird, wide, very widespread. Crab plover, a bizarre monotypic family bird, but not an endemic. And the common ring plover. Madagascar plover is an endemic. Kitlis's plover, really pretty little thing. White fronted plover. And common green shank. Terex sandpiper, what an interesting bird. I was surprised to find one here. I'd first seen one in Palau. A common sandpiper. And the greater sand plover. There is also a lesser sand plover that is smaller, but quite similar to this one. And then the little stent, which we would call um, the Western Sandpiper and Curlew Sandpiper. So there's quite a few shorebirds that are there. We have greater and lesser crested terns and the sand grouse, another one of my favorite birds. This one is an endemic, the Madagascar sand grouse. Namakwa dove, uh, these guys are um, also in Australia, but the male is the colorful one up on the left. And here is the endemic Madagascar blue pigeon, really a pretty, pretty bird. And the Madagascar green pigeon, not an endemic. The Madagascar turtle dove also not an endemic. A lot of these birds are also found on the Cormoros. But the gray-headed lovebird is an endemic, which is interesting. And greater Vasa parrot, really an interesting parrot. The Madagascar kukul, Again, not an endemic. And the next shot is um, one of these, this bird in flight. It is just stunning when you see this thing uh, fly through the forest. Really a pretty bird. There's the Madagascar cuckoo. And it is a nest parasite. Now we're into group number two of the endemic families. And there are quite a few of these. These are the kuas. This is a red capped kua. And you will notice that, uh, here's the running kua, that these birds have um, this brightly colored skin, bare skin around their eyes. All the kuas do. Here's the giant kua, cockerel's kua, and the red breasted kua. And the blue kua, C 
crested kua. This bird does not have a mustache. He has an insect in his bill. And Varro's kua. Now we're to the owls. Here's the Madagascar long-eared owl, which is also an endemic. And the white-browed owl, another endemic owl. We woke this guy up from a nap. I felt bad. African marsh owl. We were surprised to find this guy, but there he was. The Malagasy scops owl. We would call this a screech owl. This one is an endemic. And the Tarotaroka scops owl, another endemic owl. Here we are with collared nightjar. You can just see him in there with his collar. And that's also an endemic. Here's the Madagascar nightjar, not an endemic. And they have two swifts there, alpine and African palm. Those are, you can, you'd have to be up in the, um, the massif in the central part of the country to see those. The masquerine marten. And the Madagascar kingfisher, not an endemic, but certainly cute. But this little guy is an endemic, the pygmy kingfisher, and he is tiny. His bill is about as long as he is. There's the Madagascar bee eater. And broad billed roller. Madagascar cuckoo roller. Male is up on the upper left and upper right and the female, that beautiful little spotted thing is down at the bottom. Now we're into the ground rollers. This is the third endemic family group. Here's the scaly and the short-legged. This is just a bizarre group of birds. Petalite ground roller. And the rufous-headed ground roller. And my favorite ground roller is the long-tailed. We got to watch a whole family poking around doing stuff for quite a long time. Here's another, this is group number four of the endemic families, the Ascites. This is the Velvet Asciti, male and female. And Schlegel's Asciti, again, that is all just bare skin that is around the eye. And then the yellow-bellied sunbird Asciti or acety, you can pronounce it either way. There is a bulbul that's there, but not an endemic one. And green bull, which is an endemic. Long-billed green bull. Spectacled green bull. And the oxalabes, which is an endemic bird, again, with the green bulls, it's in the same family. And there's the white-throated oxalabes. Crossley's babbler, another endemic. And the magpie robin, Madagascar magpie robin. These birds are so confiding. They just will almost come right up to you. And the Madagascar hoopoe, I was uh, surprised to find this bird had actually been split from the European hoopoe. Um, forest rock thrush, another endemic. And uh, Madagascar stone chat, another endemic bird. Madagascar wagtail.
and the Paradise Flycatcher. This is a female. The males come in two different flavors, which you'll see on the next slide. There we have a white, black and, and blue, and a rufous black and white. Ward's Flycatcher, which is a small endemic flycatcher there. And Archbold's Newtonia. Common Newtonia, this one's gathering nesting material. And the dark Newtonia, I love how that parent bird is perfectly horizontal, stuffing that insect into that kid's mouth. Fortunately, there's only one cysticle in it's there. It is not an endemic, but the lark is an endemic. So is the swamp warbler. This is the Madagascar swamp warbler. And there is the Madagascar brush warbler, which is not endemic. But the subdesert brush warbler is. And there is common jerry which is an endemic. Striped-throated jerry, another endemic. You can see this guy lives up in the dry um, thorn scrub. And green jerry. And Rand's warbler, another endemic. Cryptic warbler. And the Madagascar wide eye. Not an endemic, but a pretty bird. There's two sunbirds. Madagascar green sunbird is not endemic. However, the sui, no, the sui mango one isn't either. Sorry about that. Now we're into the last endemic family, the Vangas, and there are a lot of those as well. There's the Nuthatch Vanga. This is the white-headed Vanga. And these guys are quite variable. Shabert's Vanga with that lovely blue bare skin around the eye. The blue Vanga. The helmet vanga. This is such a bizarre bird. That is quite a beak. And sickle billed vanga. Rufus vanga. You have a male at the lower right, female up at the left. Bernier's vanga. And red-shouldered vanga. And those of you who may um, have read Birding on Borrowed Time, uh, this is the last bird she saw before the accident that killed her. And red-tailed vanga. La Friends vanga. Some of these names are French. Hook-billed vanga. That's quite a beak on that guy. Pollen's Vanga, you have female upper left, male lower right. Van Damme's Vanga. Tyler's Vanga. Now we're down to the cuckoo shrikes. Here's the ashy cuckoo shrike. And now we're at the Madagascar starling, which is an endemic bird. Common mina. 
definitely widespread. Crested drongo, this guy is an endemic. Hide crow. And the Madagascar fodi. This guy is an endemic. The Sakalaka river, which is also an endemic. And the Nella Corvi weaver, male in the lower left, female upper, and there's a shot of the nest. Madagascar munia, also an endemic. Tiny little finch. Now we're to the mammals, the common tenric and the lowland streaked tenric. These are very ancient um, insectivores. The Madagascar fruit bat, also an endemic. And now we're into one of the reasons I went to Madagascar was to see the lemurs. This is the gray mouse lemur. I had a family of those guys in one of my uh, cabins. Brown mouse lemur. Milne Edwards sportive lemur. That looks like something that should have been incorporated in one of the Winnie the Pooh books. Hubbard's sportive lemur. Some of these lemurs are diurnal and others are nocturnal. As you can see from this shot, this is a white-footed sportive lemur, definitely a nocturnal animal. And the eastern gray bamboo lemur, these guys are very, uh, they're critically endangered and it's because of loss of habitat. Ring-tailed lemur. Those red eyes are just amazing. And the next shot will show you why they have their name because they have ring tails. There's an adult with a, a juvenile. Red fronted brown lemur. Black and white ruffed lemur, a really lovely, lovely mammal and pretty good sized. The Eastern Avahi. The diademed Shafak. Shafaks are a type of lemur and they are very, very interesting in that this is how they get around. Varro Shafak leaps sideways down paths. Um, you'll be walking down a path in Berenti as we were, and all of a sudden you'll have a troop of these uh, Shafox come and they just leap and that's how they go down the path. Cockerel Shafox. And the Indri. This is the poster animal for Madagascar. It is a very large lemur, very interesting. The ring-tailed mongoose, also an endemic. And the chameleons. This is another group of animals I went to Madagascar to see were the chameleons. They have um, some amazing animals. This is O'Shaughnessy's chameleon, which is a pretty good sized um, animal. This is my friend Betsy with an Oustalette's chameleon on her forearm. You can see how large these guys are. And then this guy is about two inches long. This is a spiny back chameleon. Last month they discovered uh, the smallest chameleon known uh, and it's about an inch long. So their geckos are day geckos. And we had the lineated in the front one. This is standings day gecko. This is the Madagascar day gecko, and this guy joined us for breakfast one morning. This is why you never go anywhere without a camera. And this is another animal I went there to see, the Europlatus or the leaf-tailed gecko. It's just an amazing animal. Collared iguana, again, another endemic. All the lizards or the reptiles there are endemics. Cuvier's iguana. And the three-eyed lizard, you see that third eye, it's right there in the back of the head. 
and they have an endemic snake, the speckled hognose snake. This guy is shedding, which is why he looks kind of ratty, but he's pretty cool. Radiated tortoise, these guys are uh, critically endangered, the radiated and the plowshare, uh, because they have been captured for the pet trade. Madagascar reed frog. This is one of the uh, other tree frogs they have. Obviously the um, amphibians are also endemic. This is the mantella and uh, it's on its back on the left and on its belly on the right. These are flatted leaf bugs. The adults are these red things and these fuzzy deals are the kids. They have a giant milkweed locust. It is not endemic, so I'm interested to see how far that thing flies. And I will leave you with a sunset photo of Baobab and Madagascar. And for just a moment, I will play a little bit of the injury call. These guys live in really dense forest, and this is how they communicate. You'll hear this in the morning, and you'll hear it again in the late afternoon and early evening. And it's just really pretty cool to sit outside on your balcony and listen to this stuff. But I will stop it there and ask if there are any questions. First of all, Cynthia, um, I wanted to thank you for your program. Um, I've seen uh, nature programs on, on you know, TV about, well, focusing on the lemurs, uh, but never the amphibians and the reptiles and all the birds. I had no idea that there were so many um, endemic bird families in Madagascar and just the number of birds that you saw. I mean, what a fantastic tour. So thank you very much for bringing your program to Audubon. Um, yes, no, we do have pleasure. some. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Again, um, this is our recorded program, but some of the questions that were asked previously, and we'll probably have some more today as well. Um, but um, you really talked about the deforestation as one of the problems, especially uh, people burning the wood for charcoal and so on. But uh, one of the questions was, um, are people aware of deforestation impacts? And is anything being done to lessen the deforestation? Yes, that's a great question. Uh, people are aware of, of the impact that deforestation has. And in a number of, of parts of the island, there are actually, there, there are a number of uh, NGOs that are working in Madagascar on different, in different areas. One of them um, has to do with providing, with making solar ovens and teaching um, people how to make those ovens and then going out that those people having learned how to do that going out into their communities and teaching other um, other people how to make solar ovens and use the solar ovens. Um, obviously there are parts of the country where it's going to work better than others. If you're in the uh, western portion uh, it'll work better for you because it's drier and hotter than it is in the east side. But yes, they are aware and they are working to um, to try to alleviate as much of that as they can. Thank you. You did mention that you went with a field guides group. And one of the questions was, um, when and why did you go with field guides and then during that time period? Um, we went during the rainy season uh, because that's when, um, in this, this time in November, and we were there from uh, November uh, 4th through the 30th of November. Um, it's during, that's during the breeding season. So, I mean, for the birds. And that is when they are most easily found and most visible. And then, um, we might have mentioned this, but what is the population of Madagascar? 
It's just under 28 million. Another question. Um, what is the economic status of most of the population and are they doing well? Um, you talked about most of them were uh, tied to the, the land and uh, farmers, but the economic status and are uh, they doing Madag well? Madagascar used to be, I don't want to use the word prosperous, but it was um, economically sustainable at one point. They had a change of, um, of government and there were some decisions made that had uh, very bad um, impacts on most of the population. So today it is one of the poorest countries on the planet. So, you know, it's most people are agrarian. Um, they live literally, uh, it's, sus you know, sustenance, sustenance agriculture and um, they either barter or trade or do whatever they can uh, in order to get by. You know, you mentioned that there was a change in government policies. Um, is that a recent change or no, has this, this been going on? Back, um, wow. this happened, um, hopefully they will be able to, because there are a number of NGOs that are working there now to try to help, you know, help the population um, achieve a better health care and a better quality of life. So hopefully that will change. These were decisions that were made uh, primarily, well, it was, you know, uh, it was years ago back in the 90s, the 1990s, but unfortunately they have had um, long lasting repercussions. You can't recover from a lot of stuff as quickly um, as you used to be able to, especially if you're not a first world country. Exactly. You know, you just mentioned that, and that really follows up to another question um, regarding health care. And it's, um, what is the health care situation in Madagascar? And you just touched on that. Briefly. Well, it's not great. Um, there are very few doctors. Um, doctors Without Borders works there. Um, I mean, it's, they have, they do have medical care and medical facilities, but they're few and far between. They're mostly up in the big cities. And um, so if you're in a rural community, you're, you have to find a way to get there or hope that they have a clinic that will come to you at some point. Thank you. Um, and then we're talking about deforestation because that was one of the main problems of um, some of the endemic species, but how threatened are the endemic animals due to deforestation? And is there a percent of overall endemics that are in trouble? Well, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I think it would depend on where, um, where the endemics live. And that would be true of both, um, of you know, any, whether it's birds or whether it's reptiles or whether it's a mammal. For example, I think I mentioned that um, the Eastern um, bamboo lemur is, is very endangered. Uh, and that's because of loss of habitat. Um, some of the others are not as critically endangered. Um, the, they're both, there are two different species of tortoise that are very endangered. One is the radiated tortoise and the other one is the plowshare tortoise. And that is due to um, being caught and traded illegally for the pet trade. Right, you touched on this too. Um, what is the climate like? Now you talked about the time of year being in November and it was a rainy season, but on a daily basis, did you have rain showers then every day? No, um, it was, so we were uh, in the rainy season, which um, is from, um, or summer and the slash wet season is November to April, up to March. And the winter or the dry season is April to October. Uh, we didn't have any rain. Uh, it was hot and it was dry when we were there. Okay. And, and probably because we were at the very start of the uh, wet season. Okay. So it wasn't um, uncomfortable then? It wasn't? It was hot. <laughs> if, you're in the, if you're in the thorn scrub, it's hot. It was, it was Arizona temperatures. It was hot. Yes. Um, and then this kind of goes along with the same thing about the climate, but it appears that the central portion of the country is quite arid. 
And is this correct? Some of the slides you showed that look very dry. Yes, it is very dry. Um, but remember, we were there just at the beginning of the wet season. Uh, so I don't know what that part of the country would look like. You know, I'm talking about the central part right now. I don't know what right. it would look like, you know, when you're toward the end of the wet season. Uh, but remember the prevailing, the trade winds come from the east. Mm -hmm. So you have you, the winds that come and bring the rain are coming from the east, which is why that whole eastern part of the country um, has a whole different type of forest in the western part. And it's because, you know, the clouds hit there, they drop their rain, then they go up and go over. And once they've done that, there's not a lot of um, moisture left in them um, when they get over to the west side. So it sounds like the variety of habitats is also why there's so many endemic species because it's so different. Yes, that, that would be correct. Um, another question about you know, the birding. Um, what bird was the most difficult to find? <laughs> Bernier's Vanga. <laughs> ah. <laughs> and was that in the wet forest then? Mm, it was in... Um, it was, Bernier's Vanga was in a heavily, was a heavily forested area. It does not live in thorn scrub. And it's difficult to find because these birds, they were not calling, uh, they were not moving around, they were just kind of sitting still. But we finally um, found one almost by accident because we had given up. We're like, well, forget it. If we don't see one of the Vangas, we can still be happy. Exactly, because there are quite a few other ones and all of them are- There were a lot. I told you, yeah, there were a lot of Vangas. I was surprised at how many Vangas there were. Another question. Are there any large predators on the island that have <laughs> they disappeared other than humans? Uh, other than humans? Right, other than humans. There is, um, there is a, uh, an animal called a fossa, F-O-S-S-A. It's not a cat, but it looks very cat-like. And it is uh, the largest native predator, but the most, uh, the predator with the most impact has been humans. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and then I was uh, gonna be asking, uh, what were your accommodations like? Cause it sounded like you were out um, in the, the natural habitats. So what well, was your accommodations? I can say that um, they were quite varied. Uh, we did when we would be out for a week and then come back to Tana. And in Tana, we had a really nice hotel and that was nice. Um, we, had it, we had some pretty, um, pretty rustic, and uh, primitive places where we stayed. But remember, this was, you know, 10 years ago. Right. And then we had places that were um, okay. And I did develop at one of the places, I developed a whole new, um, whole new appreciation for just having water. It didn't even <laughs> have to be hot. You know, just having water come out of the shower head would have been a really nice thing. So. And, and and so drinking water, it meant bottled water primarily? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. In the cities as well as in the... Um, Everywhere. Uh, Everywhere. Uh, now, um, Tim or other people viewing, do you have any other questions? I was just wondering what it's like to get around in Madagascar. Are the roads in good shape and are you able to get around uh, easily? You remember the one shot of the, um, of the road? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that was one of the reasons why uh, we would fly a lot and get to a place and then leave from there. Um, the roads are not, um, not to... Um, Western standards by any stretch, not even to South African standards by any stretch of the imagination. Um, they're, they're just, they're, they are what they are. And um, if you had to spend your time driving everywhere, you would either, you, you'd have a choice of two things. You'd either have to be there for a very, very, very long time 
or you would have to only do a tiny, tiny area. You couldn't possibly have gone all the way around the country like we were able to do. And it looks like there's some large lakes in the middle of the country. Did, did you visit those lakes? We did see some of them, yeah. We found, uh, for example, some of the ducks, uh, the knob-billed duck, and a lot of the herons were on those uh, lakes and in some of the inland waterways. And is there much elevation to the country? Uh, well, there's central uh, massif and there's, I really wouldn't, that's where I would call the mountains. Um, there are rolling hills. I mean, there is elevation difference, but um, I couldn't tell you what the high, what the highest, uh, you know, point was. It it wasn't. Um, it's not like mountains, mountains like like we would have out here. Certainly not anything compared to um, even you know the coast range. Looking at the map of the country, it looks like most of the population and most of the vegetation. Most of the water is around the perimeter of the country on the ocean. Yes. Is that where the wildlife yes. is as well, for the most part? Um, there is wildlife up in the mountain area, but it's not, it's mostly concentrated either on the east side or the west side or the north side or south. It's not in that high massive part. <laughs> it's quite arid up there. Well, it's fascinating to learn something about the country as well as the birds and the animals that you encountered there. Thank you for the geology and the cultural uh, history. Uh, yes, I have a question. Yes, I thought you gave a wonderful program, Cynthia, and it makes me want to go there. What did you not see that you, you particularly were unhappy to miss? Anything? Um, I saw everything I wanted to see. I went to see the leaf-tailed gecko. I went to see the um, the uh, lemurs, and the birds were actually the third reason. Um, I guess I would have liked to have gone up to the northwest part of the country and seen uh, plowshare tortoise because I really I like tortoises, uh, and we just we didn't go there so. But we got to see the radiated tortoises, and um, they're also, they're equally endangered. They're just not quite as cool looking as the plowshare. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Well, oh, Cynthia. I just want to thank you again so much for giving this program on Madagascar. I mean, I learned so much, um, you know, from in culture, uh, the natural history, um, the island, the birds, and the reptiles. Um, so thanks again for... Oh, my pleasure. I hope you guys can get that. there. <laughs> I, I, I hope to, too. Thank uh, you, Cynthia. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you, guys.